kids what they learn in class today because that helps keep the teachers accountable as well, right? That's right. Class should be fun, but it also should be something that we learn in. Um, so there's a lot of things coming up. We'll kind of review these at the end. Um, I just want to dive directly into it this morning. We started a series called Your Ways uh, two weeks ago. Uh, there was, we celebrated Mother's Day last week. So uh, hopefully all you moms had a good time and was able to get some, you know, time down. And, and uh, if I tried to do something. I did, by the way, follow through with what I said. I did the dishes last Sunday. I don't normally do those, but, uh, but then Melanie couldn't sit still, so she started doing laundry. So it was like, you know, hopefully uh, you can find a way to just relax, but she's kind of a busybody when it comes around the house, keeping things up. So, uh, you know, hopefully you guys, you ladies and women, moms got a chance to relax or just spend time with your family last week. Um, so this week we're going to get right back into it. I do want to do a quick review of last week, though. So I'm going to go over these really, really quickly just because it's been two weeks. You probably forgot some of the things that we talked about last week. The very first week we established that God's ways are. And then we went over these kind of these three things, okay? Number one, his ways are perfect. Second Samuel 2, 31 through 32. As for God, his way is what? Flawless, it says in the NIV. Wow, that's a, I've got the NIV in my, maybe just be a, a different translation, but flawless, perfect. Uh, the Lord's word is flawless. He shields all of who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord and who is the rock except our God. This is also repeated in Psalms 18 uh, verses 30 and 31. The second thing we talked about and we kind of, took on is that God's ways are counterintuitive, all right? We're challenged in Romans chapter 12 to, to not conform to the pattern in this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Uh, learning God's ways is, is counterintuitive. It is very countercultural. Um, God's ways of doing things will, will, will directly contradict a lot of the way that the world does things. And so we have to kind of relearn the way God talks about certain things and not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And then the last and final thing that we talked about the very first week was God's ways are better, all right? They're better. In fact, we sing several songs to this, even that day, how God's ways are better. In Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, we read that his thoughts are not our thoughts, neither are our ways his ways, uh, declares the Lord at verse 9. It says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So we all understand that God is, is that rain? Oh, nice. So we all understand that God is God and that the way that he thinks and the way that he operates is so much higher and better than our ways. But he didn't just leave it at that. He gave us his word so that we can learn his thoughts, so that we can learn his ways. And so that's something that we, we plan to do through this series, which will carry us all the way until we move out of the building in, uh, that's coming up at the end of, uh, uh, in middle of June. But today, we're going to conquer or tackle or try to get a hold of a different topic. I told you the very first week that I wanted to be a little bit specific about certain things. And so today, we are going to specifically hone in on honoring the Lord and the authorities He has established in the world and in our life. All right, so honoring the Lord and the authorities that he has established in the world and in our life. And I will put up as a kind of a um, warning. I have three pages of notes this morning. That is not typical. I got normally about a page and a half, two. So we got a lot of scripture to cover, a lot of things to cover. This is, I just want to emphasize how important this message is as far as the way that it's geared towards the Word of God and what He says about honoring Him and about honoring the authorities in the world and the authorities that are specific to our life. So let's move into this. Look, I, I just want to give you another disclaimer. 
this is not easy for me to teach. Okay? Um, I am my mother's son. And you've heard me say that many, many times, right? All right? And, and uh, I love my mom. But very similar to my mom, I do not know how to brown nose. Okay? I am not a good brown noser. I do not do good when it comes to sucking up to people and doing things like that. And some of you, you know, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. You, you got that one guy at work or somebody at work that just, you know, just sucks up to the boss and, and you just, it just irritates the mess out of you because you know that they're not doing it necessarily because it's the right thing to do. They're doing it to advance their position, their job, their money, whatever, and, and it's kind of two-faced, you know. So anyway, so I just want to say that, that I've never been really good at that. God has always, thank God, he's, he's always put me in positions and, and given me a lot of autonomy, given me a lot of control over my time and, and the way that the jobs that I've held at work and everything else. There are times that I've butted head with certain authorities at my job, um, not the one that I have, but, the, but several in the past. Um, and God has taught me many lessons through that, okay? Um, even, even at the church that we were at prior to this, um, there was times where I butted heads with some of even the spiritual leaders in my life, and God in many instances put me back in my place and taught me how to obey, submit, and uh, recognize that those authorities weren't necessarily just worldly authorities. Those were placed there by him in my life. And so this has been a really big struggle for me over my entire life. And so I want you to know that this, this message comes from a, a place of not only experience, but a place of, of severe humbling uh, in certain circumstances of my life. So, um, but I just want to make this point that we are all subject to some form of of authority. Every one of us, whether you're a business owner or you're uh, a boss at your job or whatever, every single one of us, or whether you're just a, an employee, are, are subject to some form of authority in, the, in your life. And this topic is, is incredibly important because it will help shape uh, a better Christian worldview of the way that you view not only your work, but the way that the, the authorities in the earth are established. Okay? It will help some of you understand the last election. Okay? It will help some of you understand the election before that okay if you if you really i just want to stress pay attention because this has to do with your world view on the way god has established things on this earth it is so important that the very first five commandments not just one the, fi the first five commandments have to do with authority, okay? I just want to read these out to you so that you can recognize the authority in the very first five of the Ten Commandments. Number one, you shall have no other gods before me. Number two, you shall not make idols. Number three, you shall not take the name of the Lord, of the name of your Lord your God in vain, Number four, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And number five, honor your father and your mother. Okay? Every one of these, the very first five out of the Ten Commandments, has to do with authority in your life. Number one, keeping God as your head authority, but obviously recognizing what God has established and that is even earthly authority as your parents in your life. These are all intended to help us prioritize honor to authorities that God has established. So let's dive into some scripture right now. There is a one, uh, we'll, we'll recognize in this scripture that there is one figure through this scripture in Matthew 28 that holds all authority over 
everything and you'll see how this authority well, i don't want to get ahead of myself let's just read it matthew 28 16 this is after jesus death burial and resurrection he appears to his disciples and this is something that he said then the 11 disciples went to galilee to the mountain where jesus had told them to go verse 17 when they saw him they worshiped him but some doubted then jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, verse 20, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. There's, there's a couple of key things that you need to recognize in this scripture, and I'm going to point those out through a couple of bullets right here. There are, there are two levels of authority that Jesus mentions here. Number one, heavenly authority. All right? And number two, as you probably have guessed it already, earthly authority. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. There's a, something also that may have gone unnoticed but jesus said something remarkably interesting in this passage all authority in heaven and on earth has what has been given to him did you catch that it's very important that you get that key point in this scripture that jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth but this authority was given to him who gave it to him god the father all right so authority i want to make this clear point okay and this goes across the board authority is not earned it is given now you, this you may challenge this because you may think well what's the what's the point of you know doing good at my job if authority or what's the point of this or what's the point of that or everything else look I think God recognizes hard work. God recognizes people that, that, that do certain things. But ultimately, God controls who he gives authority to. Authority isn't necessarily earned. It's given. Now look at Romans chapter 13 as we kind of dive into this a little bit further. And we look at a couple of different dynamics of this. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities for their is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves let's keep reading we'll unpack this a little bit more in a minute verse three for rulers hold no terror for those who do right but for those who do wrong do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority then do what is right and you will be commended verse four for the one in authority is God's servant for your good. This is going to turn in some of you, your thoughts upside down. God places authority, and those authorities are his servants, and they're for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. Your rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoers therefore it is necessary to submit to the authorities not only because of possible punishment but also as a matter of conscience this is also why you pay taxes for the authorities are god's servant who give their full time to governing Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. It, if respect, then respect. If honor, 
than honor. So there's it's quite a bit of a, a section of Scripture here where it talks about authority, governing authorities, established by God, why they are established by God, how they work for your benefit. So let's just go through there through some bullet points and look at some of the things that have been established just through this Scripture. Governing authorities... Um, let everyone be subject to the... So this is, has to do with governing authorities. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. That's the first thing that was established. The second thing is that the authorities that exist have been established by God. Rebelling against authority is rebelling against God. Now that's interesting. Because you might question, well, what if the authority is wrong, evil, stands for the wrong things, doesn't believe in the Scripture, and so on? We'll get into that a little bit deeper as we progress. But I just want to set these, 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 some of these things. Now look in verse 4 again. Hopefully they'll pop this back up. Verse 4, For the one in authority is God's servant for your good, but if you do wrong, be afraid. For rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servant, agents of wrath to bring punishment on wrongdoers. It's very important that you understand that governing authorities are God's servant and bear the responsibility of of judgment on earth that God has established authorities governing authorities on earth and their major responsibility is to bring judgment on wrongdoing on earth we submit to authorities not out of fear it says that not out of fear but out of conscience that this is something that God has established and as as a matter of conscience not as a matter if we agree with certain things or politics or 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 the what they you know put out there but we we do it because not because we recognize they're right or wrong it's because we recognize that God has established them over the, we go over them and recognize God as a matter of conscience so uh, now now let me break this down to even a more personal level because um, we've talked about the governing authorities. Now let me talk about personal authorities. There's, there's, there's people that are uh, at your job or, or that are over you. There's leaders in your life. There's spiritual leaders in your life. There's certain people that God has placed in authority. And I just remember, um, and, I, and I told you a little bit about how God has blessed me. And I think one of the reasons that He's blessed me in certain scenarios in my life is because he, he knows that I struggle with authority. And so in the, in the moments that I've had to uh, humble myself, I've tried to do that with not just because my job was at stake, but because I recognize that God is at work. Okay, And it's very important that you, you know that. Okay, At your job, um, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but... It's so important that you recognize that whenever you go to work and you're operating with other authorities that are around you and over you, that, that there is a certain amount of submission that comes with that because you recognize that, that they also have been positioned over you. And not just because you respect them or what they say, but because also you recognize that God is at work. And there are certain times that we have to humble ourselves and, and recognize that we're wrong and also recognize that, that it may not be the way that we went about doing it, but because there is an authority over us, we will, we will, we will honor God and do things the way that we are being told, okay? 
And I, I, again, I want to spend time breaking this down a little bit more, but this has definitely been apparent in my life. Some of you recently know that our, my job was, was taken over um, by my company back about in 2019, in August of 2019. And we went from being independent uh, contractors, basically, working under a contract and having a lot of autonomy, doing kind of the things that we wanted to do, to now having... <laughs> basically the same responsibilities but now having a boss okay and that's hard to do when you're used to operating a certain way with a certain kind of autonomy and and you know the way that you want to do things having somebody come in and then tell you well now you're going to go service these stores now you're going to go do it this way and everything else man it 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 it, it thank god i i don't tell him very often because i don't i don't want him to you know get a big head or anything but thank god for the people that that god has put over my life i've got a, a district manager he's pretty easy going um and he lets me do things kind of the way that i want to do them because he knows that i do a good job and i think that one of the things in your job that will be even more prevalent that you will notice is, is if you can get your boss off your back by doing your job the way that you're supposed to in the first place you probably won't have to answer for as much okay um so, but, but what does that play into, into other circumstances? What does that play into a job where you're at a job and you have a boss that's just an idiot, you know, and he just constantly rides you, he, come, he, he, he demeans you, or, or, you know, what, how does that play into that? Because do, are we supposed to have the same kind of reaction to uh, a boss that's that way or whatever? Well, let's, let's unpack this for a little bit. Um, so I, I want to look at Hebrews. There's two verses in Hebrews chapter 7 that talks about this. And, 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 and I believe that we can accept this scripture in two forms. We can accept it in a form where it talks specifically about spiritual leaders like me serving as a pastor over you. And also as authorities in our life that work in um, the capacity that have authority over us in our, in our job. So look at Hebrews 13, 7, and then we're going to go to verse 17, that both of these recognize these. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and intimidate their faith. So you, you see here, it brings specifically up the leaders that, that speak God's word over them. But also in, chap, in verse 17, have confidence in your leaders, it says, and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Obviously, uh, there will be, regardless if, if it's spiritual leaders or leaders that have been placed over your life, people with authority will have to give account for those that they manage. You understand that, right? That if you have authority over people in your life, a certain amount, if you have a certain amount of authority over it, one day you're going to give account for those people. And I recognize that too when it comes to you. And it scares the hell out of me. All right? Because I question all the time, you know, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I doing the right? Is, is there something I could be doing better? Is it, so, and hopefully, if you're a leader, you have the fear of God in you as well when it comes to that. Um, but also, look, it, do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden. And he talks about work in there. Do this so that will be a work, not a burden. For, for that would be no benefit to you. So, look, rather at work or church, chosen authority is still God-ordained. I want to make this clear, whether at work or at church, chosen authority, and it's so important that you get that word, chosen. Chosen authority is still God-ordained. That's because there is something that God has given us um, control over. He has allowed us to choose the leaders that we will be sub subjected to okay so if you're at a job where you have a, a, a boss that's a complete jerk and is just there's no help 
First, first of all, you need to recognize, number one, you chose to be there. And number two, that, that, that God has still placed him in authority. All right? You may not agree with me on everything. I rarely agree with anybody on everything. But if you're here, you have chosen to be under our leadership. And I don't say that with any kind of bragging or anything. But it's the same at work. We choose certain leaders. Now, God chooses a, a government authorities and everything. But we choose who we are going to be subject to at our jobs and everything else. And I honestly believe, with because I've seen it at my in my jobs, I've seen it. If, if I am not respected... If I am treated like a like a like a kid, I'll move on. Look, there's plenty of work, especially right now. All right, there's people getting paid to sit at home that are making money, but there's plenty of work. So, if if one of the things that we have to recognize is when it comes to our job and our responsibilities, our church, our spiritual leaders, we choose. And now, the, and I, I talk about this in the new members class, but, but one of the things that we should, that should be the deciding factor in that is if this is where God has you, all right? We can't go around and just, you know, well, one day I'm going to choose to be at this church and the other day I'm going to choose to be at this church and everything else, because then you're really never given any kind of spiritual authority over your, your life for somebody to, to truly pastor and disciple you. And the same goes with your job. If you're bouncing around from job to job to job, you might want to look inward. There might be a problem with you instead of the authority. Because God has still established that, and it's something that we need to recognize. So, Acts chapter 5. So there is a couple, there is one exception. And the good thing is that the Bible has this in there, especially when it comes to governing authorities. Uh, this is after the death, burial, and resurrection of, of, of Christ Jesus. The disciples are doing what Christ commanded them to do, which are going out making disciples throughout the entire earth. They're teaching and preaching, and they get called before the spiritual leaders of their day, and this is basically what takes place. We gave you Acts 5, 28 through 29. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determining to make us guilty of this man's blood. Basically, teaching in the name of Jesus and that Jesus was the authority and that Jesus was the Christ. They're doing this because that's what Jesus commanded them to do. Other people in governing authorities, and this, was, this wasn't even governing, this was spiritual authorities that were established in those days, told them not to. And look at number verse 29, what Peter replied. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. So, at your job, in your life, Christ has commanded you to make disciples. At your job, Christ has commanded you to make disciples. Now, what does that look like? Well, it may vary. There, there may be more lenient rules at your job. There may be more openness. There may be a strict, like, don't attach Scripture to email type things, you know, whatever. And those authorities, you need to obey those. But God has placed people in our life that we work with day and night and we, we talk to every day. Those people are your responsibility to share the gospel with them and to try to reach them and to love them and to help them and try to make them disciples. And to be contrary to that is goes against God's word. Also, what goes against God's word is any authority that t tells you anything that is contrary to the word of God. So... This now brings in a separate level of governing authorities that I want to discuss a little bit because we have the question now, well, what about governing authorities that are evil? What about governing authorities that do wrong? 
What about governing authorities that stand against what is good? Like Hitler. You know, did God place Hitler on earth? Yeah. And so, there's some scripture now that I, that I want to share with you because this is probably going to blow your mind a little bit. But as believers, as followers of Christ, we need to prepare ourselves for persecution. Please listen. We need to prepare ourselves for persecution. Well, what does that look like? Well, it may come in the form of getting kicked off Facebook. You know, I don't know. It may come something small like that uh, because of something like that. You know, later on in the future, maybe. Facebook starts censoring, you know, biblical views because they stand against homosexuality or something like that. Well, you know, you can expect that to happen, right? But is that really persecution? No, not really. That's not the persecution that I read about in the Bible. And so let's turn to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. This is talking about the Antichrist. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And it was given what? Authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation all inhabitants all inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast all whose names have not been written in the lamb's book of life the lamb who was slain from the creation of the world verse 9 whoever has ears let them hear if anyone is to go into captivity then into captivity they will go if anyone is to be killed with the sword, then with the sword, they will be killed. What? This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of who? So is he talking about us? He's talking about us being taken into captivity us being put to death with the sword that sounds like persecution and it's interesting because who gave this man the authority to do that that'll blow your minds how do we fight this well there is a little bit of insight also in revelation chapter 12 if you back up as it talks about the rise of this man this is what it says. The great dragon was hurled down. The ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power of the kingdom of our God and the authority of the Messiah for the accuser of the brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. Verse 11, they triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, not by taking up arms against them or stocking up on ammunition and, and ARs and, and everything else, but they overcame the dragon by the word, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, they did not listen. This is so important because this is the thing that we will be tested with the most. They did not love their lives so much to shrink from death. We will be tested. And, and listen, it's so important that you get this. Evil people will be given authority by God and this is always in, few, in past tense with Hitler. This has always been for the testing of the saints. 
I want you. I want to read. I don't know if you can skip back to this verse ten of chapter thirteen or something I read earlier. This calls for patient. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on this on the part of God's people. Any time that someone evil has been given a power or authority in a governing position, they still receive that authority from God. And that authority was given to test the saints. And we will be tested ultimately throughout the end times and the more and more as this progresses and the more and more you see right become wrong and wrong become right and bitter become sweet and stuff that i've talked about in the last series the more that 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 truth gets 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 exchanged for a lie we will be tested on how much we love our lives So we will be tested with patient endurance, faithfulness, and how much love we have for our earthly life. God establishes authorities in the earth. And it's easy when you recognize that whatever authority is in power yeah you want to go out to vote yeah you want to let your voice be heard yeah you want to do what you can to try to stand up for the right people and the right places and everything else i would encourage you to do all of that i would encourage you to speak truth no matter what the consequences are but know there's going to be consequences for it but ultimately god has established this earth and ultimately, this earth is temporary because there will be a new heaven and a new earth one day. And ultimately, when you look at the timeline of life, Christians were persecuted under Nero. They were persecuted under Roman authority. And, and so when it comes to like, Chaz, I'm wrapping up. I'm, I don't know if, how long I'll be, but I, will you come on and help me out now, please, sir? Um, when it when it comes to the when it because look guys you can go back and and i don't want to get into end times too much okay because it's not what this is really designed to be about but um there is there's a lot of teaching today in churches about pre-tribulation which if you've, you've done any kind of end time uh uh study or or listening to um uh end time teaching or whatever there's a lot of there's a lot of teaching on pre-tribulation i was even uh, listening to a message by Greg Glory this week. Uh, some of you know he has quotes and stuff that come on Air One and stuff like that. Uh, he's, a, he's a highly known pastor. And even Greg Glory was talking about the end times and the Antichrist. And just in the middle of his message, he said, and I believe before all of this happens, the, the, the Christians will be, will be raised out of this earth and everything else. And he went right back to teaching. And my goal isn't to de demean this great man that has led thousands of people to, to Christ, but he didn't give any evidence on that. He never gave scripture on it. He just made a statement. And I was caught off by that because when you look at the history of the Bible, well, you can point to things like uh, Noah. Well, God gave Noah escape from judgment, but yeah, what did Noah have to go through in order to build the ark? I mean, he went through a, over a hundred years of persecution while he was building the ark uh you can point to the, the the israelites well god gave them an escape from egypt and everything else but yeah do you realize that they had 400 years of oppression before they were given ex, you know an escape out of egypt and and so every time there is going to be a great escape from this earth but I don't want you to think that that's not going to that that's going to come before we experience persecution. You need to be prepared for what's coming. You need to have the mindset that this life is not your life on this earth. This is not your home. 
This is not your, you can't love this life more than the one that we're going to. And in the end time, there will be many, many, many Christian martyrs. I don't know how this will affect America. I believe we will, this will be even way more prevalent over in the Middle East and in, 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 uh, in Israel. It, I'm sure because it says this will be worldwide, I'm sure it will affect us as well. I don't even know where America is when it comes to this. Obviously, it talks about the scales of economic balance. We realize that the stock market is so volatile. The riches of your life are not in this world. Yo, I gave, though I gained the whole world and lose my soul, what have I gained? Let's stand as we close. The main thing that I want to make sure that you understand is the way that God established authority. The authority when it comes to governors, people that govern, the authority when it comes to the way God has established your job, the authorities, the way that God has established spiritual authority in your life and in my life and how we are to be subject and submissive to those authority with the exception of when they directly contradict God's Word. And there is authority that we choose to place in our life. So let's pray. Father, thank You for Your ways as we listen and learn about what Your Scripture says about authority. It's so important, Lord, because it literally changes our worldview and we understand that there is authority that is established by you on earth and ultimately you have given jesus all power and authority in heaven and on earth and there's structure with that and when we understand that there is structure at work, there can be adjustments made in our life to the way that we deal with those that are over us. It does not mean, Lord, that we blindly get led by people. Authority can be challenged as well. It's okay that we challenge authority when it comes to right and wrong. But Father, I pray that as we learn this established leadership and as we look to the future, that we will understand where our place is when it comes to the, the life that we live here on earth. And that by being an example and making disciples and listening to Your Word and allowing ourselves to be subject to governing authorities and others in our life, You will recognize that, that is, we are doing that to honor You, not necessarily them. And as we honor you, we pray that you see it, you recognize it, and that we would continue to be loyal only to you. And that we would not love our life so much that we try to escape uh, persecution by rebelling with certain guns and knives and whatever, that we would recognize that there is an established order to the way this earth comes to an end. And it's through your name, Father, that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap, church, for He's good. Ah. All right. Well, I must do some announcements and let you in on what's going on. God Talks is happening this Tuesday. 
We've had some really good. We've been watching the uh, the Chosen. I don't know if you've.